with manpower stretched thin. The Lufkin Fire Department even had to respond to an ammonia leak at a local dairy distributor during the recovery period. We have an ammonia leak here that was initially very strong. Uh, one of the pop-off valves in, in a, an ammonia tank it broke off, flooded the area with ammonia. We had to evacuate to the north, northeast and northwest for an area of about three blocks. Uh, our firemen went in, plugged the leak, and now we're cooling the system down, as you see the, the fire hose behind me. We have our personnel and uh, plant personnel inside the building to continue to monitor. What we're trying to do here is to get the liquid product out of the malfunctioning tank and into a very large holding tank. And that's our aim right now. Right now we appear to be stable. You get anywhere from 8 to 12 inches of rainfall with the probability of getting 20 inches of rainfall here. Uh, not to mention, if that happens to us, we're going to have some real bad damage. We're going to have trees down, we're going to have electrical lines down, we're going to have power out for an extended period of time. And we're going uh, we're going to have a serious situation. Not only that, we're in a sheltering business too, so we're going to have about six, seven, eight thousand people in shelters. At the same time, we're going to have to respond to a hurricane passing over uh, the city of Lufkin, which is a very serious situation. Um, we opened, I mean, we started filling up the shelters last night. We're hurricane Rita was considered a Category 1 hurricane by the time it reached the city of Lufkin meaning that the storm winds were still reaching speeds of between 74 and 95 miles per hour. And while the area was fortunate that winds had slowed and that several inches of rain were spread out over a large area, Hurricane Rita still managed to cause quite a bit of damage. Close to 250 homes, mobile homes, and multi-family units sustained damage as the hurricane blew through Lufkin on September 24, 2005. No homes were destroyed, but sustained winds and drenching rain caused major damage to 33 structures and minor damage to more than 200 others. Only 63% of those structures were covered by insurance. Total damage to Lufkin homes has been estimated at $1,325,000. That figure doesn't include damage to businesses or significant agricultural losses. Damage to the city's infrastructure and utility systems, as well as the cost of clearing away close to 130,000 cubic yards of debris, has been estimated at more than $760,000. Downed power and communication lines caused outages for several days in some areas as crews worked non-stop to restore services. Many who weren't otherwise affected by the storm ultimately had to reach out to others for food, water, and other necessities. City staff assisted other agencies by handing out ice and water to local residents during the outages. The city, local relief agencies, and many institutions, private businesses, and volunteers came together during the storm to assist in the well-organized relief effort. Hello, Hi, my name is Captain Mario Maldonado and uh, we're here at uh, Albertsons. Uh, what we're doing right now today is uh, giving a little relief uh, for the people that have been stranded here as well as local people that they've been uh, uh, it's, it's been kind of a, uh, too many people in Lufkin and so we're trying to help each and every one of them we're trying our very best to put uh, something together there's a lot of people without power uh, that means that they cannot cook in their in their in their homes 
And so what we're uh, doing right now is putting together something that they can eat, something that they just pop open and they can just eat. Uh, and it's a little relief that we are putting together for them. Uh, the wonderful uh, uh, foundation has been so uh, grateful to us to uh, uh, purchase food like that. And so that's what we're doing today. We are distributing uh, this food for the people uh, that is hungry. Also, uh, is giving is giving eyes. The National Guard is uh, they are giving some eyes as well as uh, as water. And so that's what we're doing today. And uh, we're hoping to do the best so we can uh, meet the need of so many, so many people that they're here in Lufkin, evacuates from uh, Rita as well as evacuates from. Uh, uh, Katrina, so we're doing our very best. The estimated 17,000 evacuees housed in shelters doesn't include others housed in unofficial shelters, homes, hotels, or those simply stranded in Lufkin as a result of the fuel shortages. More than a thousand of those stranded evacuees found safety at the county's exposition center which was used as a last resort shelter as the storm approached. City buses picked up stranded evacuees from parking lots and roadways to safely deliver them to the exposition center. Challenges for the city at shelters included providing security and emergency medical services, in addition to providing food, water, and other necessities. The city of Lufkin serves as one of five designated shelter hub centers for the state of Texas. We still have several roads closed, and these are all large trees with power lines wrapped around them. Uh, so I guess the main thing that we're waiting on is the power company to come through and remove those lines, and we can cut the trees out. But Wildbriar and Brook Hollow area, Howard, Spring Lake, Lilac, and Denman area. Our transit buses are running uh, on time every hour, only hour, to the Pentecostal campground. Uh, when we could not get fuel, we, we stopped that for two or three days. Uh, they started this morning at 7 a.m. and... We know that there are a lot of the, the special needs people, we had run out of space and were placed in other shelters because there was no room. So as those fill out, those special needs people are going into the Civic Center and that's what's happening to you. This morning I've, I've been to both of our sites. Uh, what I've discovered there is, is uh, some of those that came to us from the Expo Center uh, want to get on to Houston to be with family and, and relatives there a little closer. So we're trying to facilitate that as best we can. One of the best things we've done is get phone books out, put people there just as information liaisons to help them. Uh, they're, they're eager to go. They have a real fear that they'll be displaced suddenly. And uh, I've assured them that if, and they understand we want to start school at some point in time. This just Tuesday, and privately I would tell you we're resigned to starting school next Monday. Publicly, I can't say that yet, but but we, we at least have that kind of breathing space. There are people leaving today. It's hard to get a real hard count, but on each of the campuses, people are packing their bags, loading them up, and, and headed out. We've experienced a real gracious group. 